Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. All right, today we need to have the recession talk because there are tons of headlines out there telling you that, yes, there could be a major recession around the corner and maybe with Bank of America or Deutsche Bank or whatever major bank says, hey, there is a big threat of recession. Then you've got other articles that say, eh, it's a bit of a you know overblown scenario and it probably isn't as bad as many of us think. So I want to give you my viewpoint and my my take on it now I'm someone who yes I've been in finance I've done the advisory thing a lot of kind of stuff but my first degree is in economics so I know a little bit about this stuff um, so I just want to give you give you my take and then give you some some tips and things to manage this should this be the worst case scenario and I think if you've been watching for a while subscribing for a while you're probably going to be on the right track so we'll discuss that as well so first let's talk about what a recession is which I think most of us do know but let's get the definition out there so the technical working definition is when you have at least two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. GDP is gross domestic product it is basically the value of the stuff that we produce as a country. Is that increasing or decreasing? And has it done so for two consecutive quarters? So basically over six months are we producing more or less than what we did over the previous period. Now we did get numbers today for the first quarter of 2022 that we did produce less. I think it was 1.4% less was a number. So far, the stock market does not care. And I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. That's, that's, you know, it's not great, but it's not, oh my God, this thing is terrible. Um, so that's the first sign that, hey, you got one quarter down already, but the second half that most people pay attention to when we declare whether something is a recession or not is the unemployment rate. And the unemployment rate is historically low right now, which is good. More people who want to work are out there working. They're getting paid more in most cases than they have before, which is a good thing. Now, if you get both of those things at the same time, that's an issue. We're producing less and unemployment is rising, that would be a concern. But that is not the case of what is happening right now. So that's the case of, hey, we could be on our way to a recession, we're producing less. Now, the optimist in me and the other side of this is, hey, people are at work, so we should be okay. So that's another part of it. So it's kind of like in the middle. The other thing is we did have a yield curve inversion. Now, I've done an entire video on that. I would encourage you to go back and watch it if you haven't, in case you like, well, what is that? Okay, so first off, Usually when the yield curve inverts, you got anywhere between like three to 18 months that a recession is is occurring, at least historically, that is usually what happens. Somewhere in that span, things go south, right, when that happens. It doesn't happen every single time, but more times than not, yield curve, curve inverts three to six months later, use like six to 18 months later, really, that's when we run into a real recession, we run into real issues. So those are two things in the, hey, it might be a recession column. The other half of it is unemployment is low, but also U.S. households as a as an aggregate, as a total, we got $2 trillion in assets sitting in the bank. Meaning that should a recession occur, which we don't want to happen, we got more in savings now in 2022, 2022 than what we did in 2018 or 2019. We have more in, to, in the stock market than we had back then. So we have places to pull money from should we fall on hard times as a whole. So none of us expect it, none of us want that to happen, but we're in a better place to to weather the storm. Now, some banks um, like Goldman Sachs, they have each of these large banks have economists that tell the banks what to do and, and how to approach things. Uh, the Goldman Sachs economist, their chief economist says that, hey, if we hit, uh, hit a recession, he thinks that it's going to be mild. I mean, like, eh, it's, it's on paper, it's a recession, but we'll be fine. And if there is one in my view, I think that is probably where we're going to be, but I really don't see that around the corner. Now, the next question is, well, if we hit a recession, what is going to cause that? What is the, the major threat that's out there that would push us into recession and, and not you know take us from a decent economic standpoint to a bad place? Well, the, the biggest one that we know of, and that's the thing, you never really know what it's going to be. Because if you ask me in 2019, would it be uh, a pandemic? That's not what I would have thought. Okay, it was not on the bingo card at all. So one, you've got the Russian-Ukraine war. How does that impact things? Does it expand? Hopefully not. 
Could it spill over into something else? At one point, we were concerned about what if China does something? All of these are, that's fair game, right? We don't know what's going to happen in the future. So that is one thing that is obvious that we could be afraid of when it comes to recession. But the other part of it is the Federal Reserve being too aggressive. We have seen in the past, history has shown us rather, especially in the 1970s, that the Federal Reserve said, look, inflation is rampant. It's real bad. From the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, inflation was terrible. I mean, real bad. So what they did was raise interest rates aggressively and stamped out that inflation. They killed inflation. They absolutely beat inflation, but they also, in the process, crashed the economy. And that is the fear this time around that the Federal Reserve would do something similar. So yeah, I mean, they beat inflation, but they also put us into a pretty bad recession. Now, the reason why that is a threat, the reason why people are concerned is because we knew we knew that we had inflation. We knew the Federal Reserve was going to raise interest rates. We've been saying that for months now, right? And at first, it was, hey, we're going to raise interest rates, I don't know, six times, whatever it was going to be, and it was going to be 0.25%. That's what happened the first time around. But we got comments last week, and we've been listening to what the Federal Reserve has been saying. They said, look, this is our, our main enemy is inflation. If we have to, we might have to raise it. 0.5% or what they call 50 basis points. And that is even more aggressive than the last time. It's doubled, right? So some people say, look, y'all are doing a lot right now. I don't want you, we want you to stop inflation and inflation's really high. None of us like it. And we do want you to stop it, but I don't want you to, to slam your, you know, slam your brakes on the inflation or I guess slam the gas on inflation um, or interest rates. How Y'all get the example I'm trying to make. We don't want them to be too aggressive and stop stop inflation by crashing the, the economy. There has to be a middle ground. So that is the fear. It is either going to be war or it's going to be fed, the Fed and it, or it could be both that push us into recession. That is the fear. Uh, for me, I'm not entirely sure if that is going to be the case. Um, to have a recession twice within two years is relatively rare. That doesn't mean it ain't going to happen in 2023 or 2024, but that is something that you do want to be aware of. And that is one reason why banks aren't doing well because of this threat of recession. You know, it, I wouldn't invest in a bank because a bank makes money when, the th when things are expanding. So because of that fear, that's why banks aren't doing as well as what I expected them to do, which nobody was really talking about recession stuff you know, in December and in November of 2021, but now they are. So that is a part of the landscape that has changed. So aside from all of that, that's that's the history and the context of why people are talking about recessions and, and my view on how possible that is. I don't see it as a huge threat, but I understand how people could see that. So I understand the other side of the fence and the other side of the view, even though I don't necessarily agree with that. Now, other thing too is the stock market so far, and it is only April, and in the end of April, but it's only April, we're already down 12%. That doesn't mean it's going to continue that route, but that's a, that's a correction. That's correction territory. You got eight more percent before you hit a, a true bear market. That's when it's 20% or more. So this market ain't great, um, but from a, a technical standpoint, a fundamental standpoint, people have money, employment is low, so we should be fine at least for the short term. So we'll see how things evolve there. Now, as an investor, what are the things, what are the things that you should pay attention to? What should you do? A lot of the stuff that we've already been doing, if you have been around the channel for a while, been talking about defensive stocks, been talking about value stocks. Those are the places that tend to do well in recessions and tend to do well when the market is a little bit shaky. I've, you know, whether it's, I've, I've, again, go back and watch those videos because I go way, way, way more into depth when it comes to healthcare, defensive, maybe it's a Berkshire Hathaway, maybe it's a Kraft Heinz, maybe it's a Coca-Cola that, that has been hitting all-time highs, I feel like, every other day. And then you want to be careful about which one of these, you know, used to be, ha has been, um, you know, tech stocks that aren't doing so well. Like a Netflix will definitely hurt your returns. It's down almost 70% already this year, just this year. Not from last year, just from this year alone. Uh, Meta is down, even though today, at least from the time of recording, they were up almost 11% today, but they're still down 41% for the year. So it's, it's rough out here for a lot of these tech companies. You have to decide which one of those do you want to hold for now in case there's a recession. Because if there is, some of those companies are going to get even worse. 
Some of those are going to get even worse. You have to be okay with holding on to the ones that you choose to hold on to. But again, my focus right now is I'm still holding for the long term. I'm still dollar cost averaging. And I am focusing my eye on choosing companies that I know do well in, uh, in situations like this. Defensive stocks, value stocks, those are the ones I have my eyes on. I've done videos about those. I never got rid of Costco from the 2020 recession. I never took my eye off of... Dollar General. I got me a little bit of, of Dollar Tree. I'm consistently looking for things like that. Now, when it comes to June, which is now what a month and some change away, that's when I'm going to take a, a deeper look and start to replace some of the things in my portfolio that aren't doing well. I'm looking at get, getting rid of a Capital One. I will probably keep a Target. Target has slowly improved and started to get to get in the green for my personal portfolio where they hadn't previously. So I'm probably going to keep on uh, keep with Target. Capital One is probably going to have to go, and I'm going to continue to make to to take hard looks at it. Maybe I'm getting rid of an Amazon and, and switching something out there. Um, but those are the, the things that I am going through. But I'm focusing on defense. I am focusing on defense. All the places that you cannot get rid of and that you cannot go without are the places that I want to make sure I have my money, especially in times like this. And these are you know, like a, like again, uh, Walmart is a good example. Um, a lot of these grocery stores are usually good examples. In recessionary times or expansionary times, you have to go through the, to those places. It, whether the economy's up or down, you can't not eat, right? So that, those are places that I'm I'm tending to look. I'm kind of leaning in that direction as well as healthcare too, because that's another place that you have to have your medicine. All, all that stuff needs to happen in any scenario. So those are the places that I'm looking. Don't forget utilities, electric, power, water. Those are things that you're going to need and they usually pay good dividends too. This is one of those times where it's like, hey, if you're paying a good dividend, I at least am going to pay attention to you where in previous years I might not have because, you know, uh, Facebook was up 40% that year. That ain't the case no more, right? So when when things come are harder to find those high flying stocks, you might want to say, "Look, let me go get this high flying dividend." Um, if the company is solid, if the company makes sense, so feel free to go back and watch those videos about defensive stocks, about some of the top stocks that I like right now. I did one. I've done several this month, but especially the last two months or so. Go back and check those. Uh, the United Health Cares of the world have been pretty solid. I've talked about Berkshire Hathaway. Talked about Coca Cola. Take a look at those and see which one of those makes sense and start to shift your portfolio just a little bit to help you in case uh, in case of, of, of a recession. If it's not a recession, the good thing is Coca-Cola is doing great this year. So, you know, you, you're in a good spot if it doesn't do what we expect it to do, which I, I don't really expect it. I don't expect a recession this year. I would be relatively shocked. But whether it does or doesn't, Coca-Cola is doing fine. Berkshire Hathaway is doing fine. So, like... I might just hop on those, sit there. If a recession comes, I might do even better. Um, but if not, I'm still going to do better than what the market is doing, which is negative 12. While as everything else I mentioned for the most part is still in the green. All right, so that is my take. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's it for me. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye.